السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم، بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وكل من ولاه واهتدى بهداه. حديثنا اليوم مع بطل من أبطال الإسلام وعظيم من عظماء الأمة، one of the giants of Islam that we if we talk about him for a day or two will not will never be enough to to cover his life uh, and his achievements and his support and love for this deed. Uh, but we just get some hints about his life. Uh, the man we are talking about tonight, one of the friends of the Prophet sallallahu Physically, he was so skinny, he was so short, slim. Uh, so much so that you know, if you look at him, you will kind of, you know. Uh, physically, he will not be that strong or that big for you to, to look at or so. But he carried a very strong soul and spirit. He carried Islam in his heart and he was one of the leaders of Islam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud ibn Ummi Abd. He was known as ibn Ummi Abd and his name is Abdullah, the son of Mas'ud. He grew up as a shepherd, Ra'i. He was, that was his job. Uh, taking care of, of some of the sheep for Uqba ibn Abi Ma'ayyat or Mu'ayyat uh, for money and he was doing this most of his life is outside he was from Mecca but most of his life based on his job or uh, due to his job was outside uh, the, the suburbs of Mecca the outskirts of Mecca because he has taken the animals and following you know right and left trying to find food for them he heard about the appearance the advent of a Prophet uh, in Mecca, but he didn't get much of information about him. Until one day he was out there outside Mecca doing his job, two people appeared, they came, you know, they looked like running from something or they were, they were extremely thirsty and they needed some water or some milk or something and they politely asked him, would you boy give us some uh, uh, get some milk for us from these uh, sheep so we can just, you know, quench our thirst. He said, well, apologize very politely. He said, I'm sorry, that's, that, that's not mine. I'm just hired to take care of them and I cannot do that for you. And I'm sorry for that. They did not like reject it or object or complain about it, but rather they like these two people, they like what he, what he said, how he replied to them. But they rather asked him, would you allow us to, you know, look at this uh, little animal right there. It was a little uh, sheep that did not have produced milk or something. It was not in this position to do it. So this, he said, well, you're trying to tell me you're going to get milk out of this? That's, that's not, no male touched it, touched it or something. That's not possible. They said, just allow us. They allowed, they, they, he allowed them. And one of them came and he touched the, uh, on the animal and, and said something or prayed to Allah. And all of a sudden, tala ad-dar, a lot of milk is coming out, you know. And they started milking this sheep and they got milk, they drank, and they gave him some to drink. And he was in the middle of all that, like amazed by what's going on. And this man, this blessed man who did it was none but the Prophet wasallam. And he came to know about him, he talked with them, and soon after that he accepted Islam, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. It's said that he was the sixth, number six, to accept Islam. So we're talking about somebody who is regarded as one-sixth of Islam. The first one will be in his time, the entire Islam. The second one to accept Islam, he was half Islam, half all Islam at this time, the third one. So this was number six, meaning he was at certain point like only six people in the face of earth are accepting Islam, he was one of them. So that means he was one thick sick of Islam. Uh, Abdullah Mas'ud, when we talk about him, we have to remember, you know, he comes with Quran. Abdullah Mas'ud, Quran. He was, that was his specialty. So much so that the Prophet Sallallahu gave him this appreciation certificate. Appreciation certificate not from an organization or any that's from Rasul Rabbil Alameen, from the Messenger of the Lord of the World. He said, استقرئوا القرآن من أرض أو من أربعة. Uh, recite Quran or, or learn recitation of Quran from four. فقال عبد الله بن أو من أمي من عبد الله بن أمي عبد بن مسعود 
فبدأ به and he said number one Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the first teacher that you have to learn Quran from he started with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud then he mentioned Salim Mawla Abi Qudayfa and Ubay ibn Ka'b and Mu'ad ibn Jabal uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud talking about Quran he was uh, another hadith that Nabi Sallallahu said من من أراد ومن أحب أن يقرأ القرآن غضبا طريا كما أنزل عليه فليقرأه على قراءة ابن عبد. Whoever wants to read Quran as pure and fresh as it was revealed to me, he should learn how to do it according to the recitation of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, when he, you know, when this situation happened with him, uh, the milk about the milk and stuff, he decided to leave all of that and come to believe in the Prophet and actually stay with him to be to serve him. So he was with the Prophet ﷺ, having nothing in mind. He left everything behind and he followed him day and night. He was one of the very few people, if not probably, uh, like very, very few people who had this access to the Prophet ﷺ, free access to him in his house, whatever he is. The Prophet ﷺ is taking shower, he is covering him or he is like taking care of him. He was with him at all times. That's why he learned a lot from the Nabi wasallam. He is from Mecca, Muhaji, migrated to Medina, attended all the situations and everything and all the battles with the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, one day, uh, this is another certificate from the Prophet ﷺ, as the Prophet ﷺ one day asked him to give him something from uh, a tree, like something was hanging on the tree, and he climbed the tree. Uh, and as he was doing so, because he was so skinny and he was so short, so uh, the Sahaba, they saw his legs. And when they saw how skinny and tiny they were, they, they kind of smiled or laughed at that. You know, that comes like naturally. So You laugh at how skinny uh, the legs of, of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud uh, are like. By Allah, those legs in the mizan, in the scale of deeds, in the day of judgment, are heavier, heavier, more heavy than Jabal Bukhud, the mountain of Bukhud. Well, the scholars, uh, they, they say that uh, the Jabal Bukhud, the mountain of 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 Bukhud, the mountain and another hadith from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يبتل سمين فكذا فلا يزن عند الله جناح بعض الله يعني another hadith that they quoted for uh, that the doers also will be weighed he said a heavy man or a thick man will be brought to Allah سبحانه وتعالى day of judgment and, and his weight he will weigh not even like a wing of a bug or something or a mosquito anyway let's go back to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he lived after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he was one of the Sahaba that used to have ulama, scholars amongst them to teach, and they used to have other regular Sahaba, even though they had part of the knowledge, but they, we had key Sahaba, Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was one of them, one of the scholars who will be later on be Rafid ibn Rawafid al-Fiqh, one of the sources of knowledge, one of the like uh, lighthouse for, uh, as far as Islamic knowledge for the next generations, people will quote his ara, his views, and his you know, ishtihadat and so on. At the time of Umar, he moved to, Umar actually sent him, he sent Ammar ibn Yasir to be the leader and Abdullah ibn Sa'ud to be the teacher and muallim for Al-Kufa. Al-Kufa was one of the capital or centers of Islam at this time, which was, or used to be a city in Iraq, Iraq. And a lot of scholars were there. Abdullah ibn Sa'ud started this big school of, you know, knowledge in there. He was the leader of that. And Umar ibn Umar ibn Khattab, as he was sending him, he sent a letter to the people of Al-Kufa and he said, I sent to you Ammar and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and I prefer you to myself by giving you him. Like I would rather love to keep Abdullah ibn Mas'ud next to me, benefiting from him and he would help me, but I'm actually, you know, uh, 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 giving you this advantage by sending you Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Uh, uh, Abdullah Mas'ud, he died, uh, you know, he lived to the time of uh, Uthman ibn Affan and he passed away in the year uh, 32 during the time of Uthman. And as, you know, he was in the deathbed, Uthman was telling him he refused years before that to take any money as a salary, even though Dawla al becomes like rich, the Islamic state, and everybody by, by default. 
qualifies to take a salary, not only the, the, the needy or poor, but actually anybody who is born at certain time, from time of Umar, some time at the time of Umar ibn Khattab, they used to have salary coming, salary coming to them. Abdullah refused this from the beginning, he said, no, I don't need it, I'll talk. So, uh, at the time of Uthman, as Abdullah was dying, he said, well, you would rather probably uh, need this money right now, I can give you Ata, your salary that you reject to take all of these years. Uh, uh, that's the time, he said, no, I don't need it. He said, maybe it's not for you, for your daughters, because he has daughters for you, after you. He said, well, you're trying to, to give me this suggestion and, and, and I'm leaving them with something that uh, if they do, they will never be touched with any poverty or anything. I'm teaching them what I told them already, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, to recite every night before they sleep. And I heard the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites Surah Al-Waqi'ah before they sleep, they will never be touched by any poverty or anything. So, subhanAllah, he had this level of faith, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he had this level of faith. One of the, 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 the very important uh, also incident to show, to show you his courage, even though he was not courage, by the way, is not by how big the person is, it's actually by how strong your faith is, by how strong your soul is. Um, you will learn how strong he was by knowing that at the very early of Islam people knew that there is a prophet and everything but nobody at the beginning, everybody was practicing his, his faith secretly, his ritual secretly. Until one day they said, well, we need somebody to make Quraysh hear the Quran or listen to the Quran. And everybody was kind of a little scared because this is the first time you go out and recite to them something that proposes them and they don't have any rules or anything, they're going to kill you. So Abdullah Masood, without any hesitation, he said, I will do that. He said, well, let's talk about someone else. Let's think of anyone else who has a family to support him because Abdullah was not like from the elite or the high class or something. His family was not that strong to support him. He said, I will do it. By Allah, I have no fear from them. I fear only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he came next day, reciting to them, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allama al-bayan In the morning, early in the morning, as all the Quraysh was around Kaaba, they started hearing him, what is that? Oh, these are the words that Muhammad wrote, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they came all of them, and they started hitting him and, and beating him so badly that he was bleeding. And he came to his field, he said, we warned you against that. We told him, he said, by Allah, لَهُمْ أَهْوَنُ فِي عَيْنِ الْآنِ يَعْنِ مِمَّا كَانُ مُنْقَبْ By Allah, I look even further down at them, I belittle them even more. It's not like I, I'm afraid of them. And if you want, I will do it tomorrow, next day. I'll do the same thing. He said, no, no, that's enough. And subhanAllah, that shows you how proud of his faith this person was of his faith. He was proud to go out and recite Quran for people and announce his faith so clearly to people and so courageous as well. رضي الله عنه عبد الله مسعود ونسأل الله جل أن يعلمنا من علم يوم علم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأن يحيانا على خطاه وعلى أبيه اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم